In this presentation, we will do the analysis of clocked sequential circuits with the flip-flop. It is a very important presentation and once you are done with it, you will have a feeling of the sequential circuits. You then know how to actually approach to a sequential circuits and what you have to do for that. The optimum goal of this presentation is to find out the state diagram of this sequential circuit. And there are three steps involved for getting the state diagram and uh, we will uh, see each step one by one and uh, actually it's not very tough thing to do once you have the basic idea or once these steps are clear to you. So without wasting any time let's move to this circuit. In this you can see the input is X, the output is Y and the two flip flops are used and both the flip flops are D flip flop and also gates are used as our combinational logic, the input combinational logic and the output combinational logic. So the first step, let me write it down, the step number one, step one and uh, in step one we will find out the input and output equations we will find out we will find out let me slide this board a little bit the input and output equations now what is this input and output equation we will find out the expression for da and db which gives us the input equation and we will find out the expression for y which will give us the output equation so these three things we have to do now so let's start with it let's find out the value of da and the expression for it and it is the output of this OR gate now you can see the input x is one of the input to this AND gate and the other input you can see is QA QA is given here as the other input so here the output of this AND gate is x q a okay and this x q a is now acting as the input to this OR gate and the second input you can see from here is q b q b is going like this as the second input so overall this is q b overall my d a is equal to x q a or Q B. So I will write my input equation for D A equals to X Q A or Q B. Similarly you can find out the expression for D B and it is the output of this AND gate. The first input to this AND gate is Q B from here you can see and uh, I will write Q B here. Similarly the second input to this AND gate is Q A and then because of this NOT gate complement so the second input is QA complement so the output here is QA complement QB so DB the expression of DB is QA complement QB now we will move to the output equation the value of Y the expression for Y so for that we have to find out the output of this OR gate and uh, the input to this OR gate is the output of this two AND gates so the first thing that I will do is to find out the output for these two AND gates let's see for this AND gate what is the output here the first input you can see is QA directly so Q a and the second input is x x is coming like this and it is given to this gate so x q a and for this end gate the first input is q b complement and the other input is x complement so here i'm having x complement q b complement then we have to or this two things and we are having our y so i will write y equals to x complement QB complement or XQA. Now in this way I have my input and output equations and our step 1 is completed. The next thing is to make the state table which is our step number 2. So let's make it the step number 2 that is the state table. You already know about the state table, what are the different columns involved in it and if you don't know there is no problem we are going to make one state table for these input equations and output equation. The first column consists of the present state and the present state is what? QA 
QB. The second column will have the input X. The third column will have the next state QA plus QB plus. This plus represents it is the next state. And the last column is Y. That is our output. Now a very important thing comes is the value for the next state. What will be the value of the next state? We know our Q and QB. We know our input X and depending upon this Q, A, QB and X we will have the value of Y from this equation. But how we are going to find out the next state? You have to just remember the lectures when we were studying the flip-flops and uh, when I was explaining the deep flip-flop in the characteristic table and the excitation table I told you that the value of D is equal to Q N plus one where qn plus one is my next state similarly if i talk about the next state value of my a flip-flop it means qa plus it is equal to da similarly if i talk about the next state of qb flip-flop it is equal to db and uh, from the input and output equations we have da we have db so we have qa plus and qb plus in this way we can find out our next state so let's fill this table and uh, let me draw this separating lines. There are total 8 possible combinations. I will show you because there are 3 variables QA, QB and X. So there are total 8 possible combinations. I will uh, tell you how to find out the value of QA plus, QB plus and Y and then rest of the cases you can handle. Finally we will move to the step number 3. So let's fill this 0, 0, 0. Let's see this first case when QA, QB is 0, the input is 0 then what will be the next state and output? Q A plus is equal to DA and DA is what? DA is XQA, XQA or QB. So QA is 0 and X is 0. So I will write 0 and 0. QB is also 0. So overall I am going to get 0. The value of QA plus is 0. So I will put 0 here. Similarly, QB plus is equal to DB and it is equal to QA complement and QB. QA complement means 0's complement, it is 1 and QB is 0 already. So I am having 0 as my next state value for the B flip-flop. Then we will find out the value of output Y. Y is equal to X complement, X is 0, so its complement is 1. QB complement, QB is 0, so its complement is 1 and XQA, X is 0, QA is 0. So overall I am having 1 here. So the output in this case is 1. Similarly we will do for the next case when Q is 0, QB is 0 but X our input is 1. In that case if you see X is 0, let me do it in different color so that we can differentiate it. X is 1, so 1 is here. QA is 0, so 0, QB is 0. So overall I am having 0, 0 here. Similarly, we will find out for QB plus. QA complement means 1 and QB is 0. So again it is 0. The output Y, let's check for it. The output Y, X complement, it means 0. QB complement, it means 1. X is 1, QA is 0. So it's going to be 0. In the same way, you will do for the next 6 cases. And they are 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 you have to find out the value of next state and the output you can do it by yourself I am just going to fill this and then we will move to this step number 3 I have completed this table I hope it is same as yours this is the table and now we can move to the step number the step number 3 step and this is the final step in this we will find out the state diagram so let's start with it there are two flip-flops so definitely there will be four possible states I have already explained this thing in the initial lectures the four states are S0 and in that case the value of QA and QB will be 0 0 the second state is S1 0 1 
S2 1 0 and S3 is 1 1 so let's make this states I will make four circles for this okay let me make it a little bit bigger and this is our fourth circle and uh, this first will represent my state 0 as 0 so 0 0 this will represent S1 so 0 1 this will represent S2 so 1 0 and this will S3 so 1 1 now the role of the table comes we have to make this state diagram depending upon this table that we just evaluated and uh, you can see when QA QB are 0 0 it means I am here and I make the input the value of X equal to 0 where I am going I am on the same state the next state is also 0 0 it means if I give the input equal to 1 so input is 1 and you can see the output is also 1 so output is 1 very simple similarly we can analyze for this case when I am on S 0 and the input is 1 X is 1 then I am again on the same state so I will write what 1 and the output is 0 so 1 0 now let's see this case when the value of Q and Q B 0 1 it means we are on S 1 the input is 0 and we are moving to 1 1 it means from S 1 we are going to S 3 and it is when the input is equal to 0 and the output is 0 I hope you are getting these things now let's see this case when we are on S1 0 1 it means we are on S1 and the input is 1 then again I am moving on S3 so I will write 1 0 because 0 is the output in this case now let's see for this case when I am on 1 0 1 0 is my S2 I am here and the input is 0 and it is making me to move to 0 0 it means the next state is 0 0 like this and the input is 0 and you can see the output is 1 so output is 1 and for this case for this case when I am on S2 here and the input is 1 I am again on S2 so the same state when the input is 1 and output is also 1 in this case let's see for the second last case when I am on S3 1 1 input is 0 and I am going on 1 0 it means I am going on S2 input is 0 and output is also 0 let's see for the last case when I am on S3 1 1 and uh, when the input is 1 I'm going on 1 0 again I'm going on 1 0 so the one input is also making to go from S3 to S2 and the output is 1 in that case so this is the state diagram for our circuit and I hope all the three steps are clear to you these three steps are required to make the state diagram of any sequential circuit so this is all for this presentation if you have any doubt regarding this you can ask in the comment section always so I will end this presentation here see you in the next one